Hi, and welcome back to Epic Restorations. We've spent the better part of our summer working through our hydraulic brake system. We've mounted and connected our master cylinder and run all of our lines from the front of the car through to the two rear brake cylinders. With these jobs behind us, we're finally ready to bleed the brakes. Bleeding the brakes on the front end of the car is fairly straightforward, but on the back end, it's a completely different story. Our rear wheel cylinders are mounted on the bottom of the backing plate and will require a little finesse to see the job through. We've got a full slate of work ahead of us this weekend, so let's get to work. Last time, we mounted our new master cylinder and ran all of our brake lines. We began our work today by attaching our two-pronged fork-type clevis and cross-shaft rod to our brake pedal. Using some DOT3 brake fluid and a small filter, we filled the master cylinder with fluid and began to bleed the rear brakes. So, we're bleeding these juice brakes, and unfortunately these are upside down compared to the way they were designed to be, but it was easier for people to put these back plates on upside down because the bleeder in that would run in line with your spring and shackle up on top. Now some of the books say to drill holes and turn this about 16 degrees and then you could keep it at top, but even then it's still hard to bleed. So what we did is we got our wheel cylinder ready. We have to be careful not to push these out when we're bleeding. And we've loosened this up enough to turn this completely around so the bleeder's on top. We're gonna bleed it, and when we're all done bleeding, I'm gonna just loosen up the line just enough so I can turn this the other way around and put it in upside down, which is the correct way. It's the only way it will go on there. It's the only way that the holes will line up and make it fit. So, just making sure I got my pistons in there okay. All right. So what we're going to do, we'll hook up our bleeder and then we'll go through the normal bleeding routine. Bleeding the brakes really requires two people working on it. One person in the car pumping the pedal and the other person bleeding the lines from the cylinders. Okay. Okay, push her down. Stop. Okay. 
go. Step. Okay. Go. Step. Okay. Go. Step. Okay. Down. Up. Up. Down. Down. Up. Up. Down. Down. Up. Up. Down. Down. Up. Up. We got to do it. It's very gently. Loosen us just barely enough to rotate this around. back up a bit. There. Now we're ready to go ahead and we're going to have to pull on our line here a little bit. Get everything lined up. So there. Now we can put the mounting bolts in the back. And once we have that then we can put all of the rest of the brake components on. Um, Three new lock washers. Once the rear brakes were bled, we moved to the front of the car and bled those. Just to be sure we had successfully bled all of the lines, we went back through them each one at a time before we were completely satisfied that all of the pockets of air were gone. Some would argue that hydraulic brakes don't belong on a Model A, but our car is truly a restoration of what it became over its many years and many miles of service. It's like a Frankenstein with all of its alterations, but we're going to continue to restore it to be the best version of its current self that we can. We know that we won't keep everything the same, but it has a history and we don't want to strip all of that away from it. Join us next time as we mount our hubs, put the wheels back on the car, and finally get this car down off the jack stands on the next episode of Epic restorations.